Hi, everyone. This is Tom Wilk, Chief Editor of Plant Services, back again with you for a new episode of Plant Services Two Belts Podcast. Today, we've got a guest that I met for the first time a couple weeks back in Orlando, Florida at the ARC Industry Forum. It's Tracy Schwarzendruber, and she's the Vice President of Marketing for Power Generation and Oil and Gas at GE Digital. And her LinkedIn page also says she's a marketing provocateur. Uh, and let me tell you, she lived that out at the press conference that I was at in June because she hit these amazing high points, boom, 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 about what GE is doing, uh, moving and grooving in the market. And so she agreed to talk with us today one-on-one about some of those uh, achievements. So Tracy, welcome to the Tool Belt. Great to be here, Thomas. Could you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you're working with GE Digital, how you moved into this area? Sure. I mean, you, you got the title spot on. And, and what I do, I like to, to tell, you know, in layman's terms, when family and friends ask, what do you do? What do you really do as a marketer? Um, I like to say that I connect industry with, uh, with software that um, solves some of the industry's, you know, toughest problems, right? Like we're, we're helping um, uh, process uh, intensive uh, industry run better, essentially, right? How can we help a a better run uh, plant is a more efficient plant, which is actually a more sustainable plant. Um, We're we're doing so many really great things. Even on the power gen side, we have technologies directly focused on um, helping provide insights and recommendations on how much power to produce from what type of generation source, whether that's renewables or fossil, um, and, and if it is fossil, we even have products that help those run more efficiently, burn less fuel with fewer emissions. So I got to tell you, this is somewhat of a dream job. Um, I've always been lucky in what I've marketed. I could always feel good about it. Um, but now I feel great about what I market. I hear you. Two jobs ago, I worked as an EPA contractor uh, fighting for the right side of cleaning up uh the stuff that was making the world dirtier place. And now working for plant services, I feel very similar, especially with announcements like yours uh, at the press conference at ARC. You linked the software solutions that GE Digital is providing so quickly and effectively with sustainability. Uh, It just got me excited to to talk today. Awesome. I'm glad that you picked up on that. (laughs) Well, one of the things you launched at the event were uh, GE Digital's accelerators. And these are software modules uh, designed to help plants streamline the reliability efforts. For anyone listening, you can search GE Digital Accelerators um, after this podcast. But Tracy, for those listening, can you talk more about the accelerators, introduce them to our audience, what, what they are, what, what they can do? Sure. So I'll start with the, uh, the, the explanation specific to our product, and then I'll get into the provocateur in me. Um, and, and the way that, that I like to, to explain it to, um, to folks just like me, right? Uh, but, but accelerators are really, if you think about it, um, they are uh, downloadable, if you will, content um, and so forth that just make our applications, um, your time to value with those applications, it collapses that time, Right. So they might be um, analytics. It could be a dashboard, can be an asset strategy um, Mm -hmm. that that have deep domain expertise because not only as the software um, developer, but as in many cases, the implementer within industry, we know the best practices. And we have seen time and again and again, dozens, if not hundreds of times, customers needing the same type of configuration. And so, you know, some smart people within the organization said, hey, we keep seeing the same requests. Why don't we package these? Why don't we productize, right? These services that we are doing. And that's really what an accelerator is. So it's, it's a way to get faster time to value so that instead of making, let's say, 27 different decisions and, and the work behind um, setting up an asset strategy, we can give you those prepackaged strategies so that instead of just deploying um, APM against the most critical assets in your facility um, or enterprise, 
you can go ahead and deploy it against all the tier two and tier three assets that you always say are, we'll get to it. And we all know what happens there, right? You never do get to it. This is a way of really ramping up and, you know, bang, you get to now apply it to hundreds of other assets. The easy way of, of explaining it, right, to those who go, I still don't quite understand this, right? APM is like Minecraft. Um, and I have a 13 year old son who, who still plays Minecraft. I know a lot of adults who do too. And, um, for those who aren't familiar with it, Minecraft is a sandbox game. So it's, it's creative and, and people create in it. Um, and it, you just aren't given, you can be given a world, but you can go into creator mode where you create your world. And I like to think of accelerators as just that, right? You can go into Minecraft and have a sort of blank canvas, if you will. But there are now all kinds of downloadable content packages from from the owners of Minecraft, um, which I think these days is Microsoft, um, as well as just other creators out there so that you don't have to spend the hours of work building, right, a texture for something or otherwise, you can just go ahead and download that. So in my simple mind, that's an accelerator, right? They could have just as easily called theirs accelerators because it's bringing that faster time to value. Now I get in Minecraft, half the fun is building it. Um, I would say an APM, you just want the value, right? <laughs> you, right. The, the, the fun isn't necessarily in building it. It's, you know, just get, get me the end result. And that's what we're doing. Right. Well, I take your point because these accelerators help meet the plant teams where they are on their projects, not necessarily even on the maturity process of the team when it comes to, say, advanced uh, predictive or prescriptive maintenance. This is a chance for plants to, to leverage software packages to solve the problems they are working on at that moment, right? That's something we always preach here at Plant Services is when you do move into these uh, more proactive maintenance projects. You don't have to boil the ocean to fix all the assets. You focus on the assets that are most critical, like you alluded to, and you focus on the problems that you want to solve at that moment and then sort of grow from there. And that's that that really sounds like what the accelerators can help people do is you download the stuff that you need at that moment to, to help make your journey easier and quicker. That's exactly yeah. right. And the other, and I would say again, I I really want to lean into the idea of, you know. You're exactly right. There, there are tons of just phenomenally smart um, and experienced people in, in our industry, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes they just don't have the time or, or sometimes mm -hmm. they might have deep expertise to a point. And these accelerators really do take a body of other experts, right, um, within industry and give you sort of that base to you can still you can still customize. That's the other really um, key thing here is we can give it to you, and then you can decide: do you want to do you want to just plug it in as is, or do you still want to make nuanced changes that suit your particular right um, process or needs? You can still do that, but we've given you that maybe let's say eighty percent of a jump start on things if if you still feel the need to customize. It's an intriguing way also to leverage the rest of industry's plant knowledge too. You, see, you, know, you, you and the team drew these accelerators from the use cases you saw most often. Uh, and, and so what's happening is that anonymously, people who have run into these issues before are sort of donating their expertise in the form of these accelerators to help other plants reduce the time to get the job done. That's really intriguing. Absolutely. I think what you're describing there almost feels a tiny bit of without without um, intended tiny bit, maybe crowdsourcing knowledge and expertise. Great word. That's it. Yeah. Um, well, given that sort of crowdsourcing element to it, uh, are you able to talk about any results from customer tests in the field? Uh, maybe a better way to ask the question would be, what are you hearing from customers who are trying these out at this point? Well, you know, it, the feedback has been fantastic. And, um, you know, these aren't necessarily new. It's, it's a new mm -hmm. deployment. It's a new packaging, but we've been, we've been doing these as, as, as services in the past, right? We've been doing it for years. So the feedback is fantastic. It's phenomenal. Um, the, the new feedback is, wow, you've now just unlocked and unleashed, right? 
so much more to us, right? To, to again, I, I almost part of the, you know, accelerate, I'm overusing that word, but it is a jump start, And it's, mm-hmm. it's now you're giving us the ability um, to cover so much more, to do so much more in, in terms of maybe an asset strategy, but in terms of a uh, health and, and reliability dashboard of, you know, just giving me that head start of, of my view of what I should be paying attention to. Um, and then I can grow and learn and modify. Um, but, but really the, um, the response to these is, is incredibly favorable. You're taking me back to the days when I used to be more of a web designer and web content specialist. And the day I discovered there was a thing called GitHub, my, my eyes just opened wide. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a resource like this? <laughs> That, that is, again, you know, that, that's, um, that's definitely a, a great analogy, probably a little more, um, more uh, relatable than maybe even Minecraft, maybe not as fun, but that's exactly <laughs> it, right? You go, to the, you go to the resource hub and, and you go, okay, who else has built something? Because there's a lot of smart people out there and what can I use? Well, let me switch over to the other event that you announced at the ARC event, which was that GE Digital has achieved uh, Amazon Web Services or AWS energy com- competency status. And this ties into your comments about sustainability earlier. Um, it was positioned as an achievement that helps industrial companies accelerate their energy transition specifically. So tell us more about this achievement. Yeah, so, um, you know, it, it, it sounds small, but I got to tell you, there are months and months of, of work behind it. Um, and, and this really is an achievement that, um, you know, AWS, we, we submitted for it on the, with the basis of our APM solution mm-hmm. in the cloud, of course. Um, and it was thoroughly vetting and puts it lightly, um, really under a microscope to make sure, is it truly um, uh, architected, um, developed, um, and, and so forth. That's really, um, for scalability, rapid deployment, right. Of our APM solution. And we believe that APM is sort of this, uh, foundational bedrock of energy transition. Um, if you do not have solid foundation in your current operational excellence, right? Whether you're in oil and gas or whether you're a a power generator, for example, you're not going to be able to take those next steps, right? You have to have those those initial items in order. And even for a power generator, I mean, um, being able to produce reliable, affordable, and sustainable power has everything to do with reliability, um, you know, power plants, traditional power plants were designed to run at base load continuously, right? Um, with maybe a ramp up, a ramp down um, once or twice a day. That is not the case anymore. As we bring more and more renewables um, online, those plants are having to operate um, very, ra- you know, more rapidly react and turn up, turn down, all over the place, right? Um, there's even, you know, this notion of the duck curve, right? Where you can really see as the renewables come on and it, it takes a dip and then it takes a huge spike up. Right. Reliability is everything because they need to know that they can generate when needed and quickly, right? So uh, that that's really the basis um, for the AWS competency status and why our APM solution is that foundational piece um, for us. Let me ask you one more question. What's your sense of how the sustainable moment will persist now? Because um, is, do you think it's going to take additional pressure from industry to keep this moment front of mind? Do you think that sustainability has moved into that permanent front of mind status when it comes to things like uh, ESG uh, reports coming from companies? What, what's your sense? Um, personally, I think uh, sustainability, net zero, energy transition, however you want to frame it, um, is, is our most pressing issue of, of our generation and more importantly, the, the future generations, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's what's going to keep it at the forefront um, for the foreseeable future until we do hit that goal. And, and I think the pressure is on. Um, as I think about it, you know, 
now that we've entered uh, the, the, the 20s, if you will, the 2020s, it feels, it, it feels like it's right around the corner, right? Mm-hmm. 2050 um, for this, this concept of net zero um, is not far away when you consider that, you know, we have to cut our emissions in half by 2030, by most accounts. So the pressure is on. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and again, it's not just our generation, but the, the future generations that are even going to exert more pressure for us to get this right, right, and to hit these targets. And I think that's why, you know, it, it's, it's not just buzzwords anymore, right? That this is, you, you, and you can't just say it for, for say, saying it, right? This is come to the table with tangible, meaningful outcomes and mm-hmm. how you can make an impact. It's it, you know, when I look back and, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was somewhat lip service, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of folks were saying things, a lot of mm-hmm. things were quote green. And in most part, it was for lip service sake. Um, you can't get away with that anymore. That That's unacceptable. People really do want tangible results. And I think it really shows uh, the level of importance and scrutiny that has uh, come to this topic. That's something that's interesting about the maintenance field in general is that I think people, it, it's a field that needs to attract uh, skilled workers, like, like many in the industry, right? Um, and going forward, it does feel like a sustainability background or even a background in, in environmental science or facility management that will make candidates that much more attractive because going forward, as it as a performance management APM is going to be linked so closely with energy use in a facility that you need candidates who might not otherwise consider reliability as a field, but who may be interested in environmental science. And they'll say, oh, hey, look, I can actually have an impact. Maybe I'm not out there uh, working with the weather patterns, but I'm working in the industry, <laughs> industrial facilities, watching power use and making sure that they do observe near or net zero or initiatives. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I think um, I, I think uh, a lot of folks are going to get um, drawn to these industries because they are the very industries that can have the greatest good impact in terms of helping them, right, reduce footprints um, and so forth. So I think there's a huge attraction if you want to make a difference. Um, These are the industries to get involved in, right? Um, They're the ones that have a heavier lift ahead of them, much more rewarding. And uh, our three boys are under 12 and they're about two rooms over. And I think, Tracy, they're literally playing Minecraft at this moment. (laughs) So to tie it back into where we started, um, yeah, it's this next generation is going to be very aware that the games they play and the work they do has a direct connection to the power that's consumed and the way they can eventually contribute to more sustainable consumption. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, Tracy, thank you so much for taking time uh, today to talk with us. And uh, where can we point people if they want to, not just Google accelerators, uh, where, where can they go for more information? I'm going to point them directly to ge.com slash digital. And there you're going to see a wealth of not only just the power generation, oil and gas, portfolio, but all of GE Digital's portfolio, which um, again, I, I could go on and on for days about um, the, the good things that, that our products do, but it's a wealth of information there. All right. Well, Tracy, uh, Marketing VP, Marketing Provocateur, uh, thank you so much for being with us today and telling us about Accelerators and, uh, and AWS Energy Competency. Thanks so much, Thomas. It was the highlight of my day. 